I had been coming to the Royal Court to, to see plays since about 87. And um, so I'd always felt that it was the, it was the most exciting place for, for theatre, really. Um, I, the plays, but also um, the acting. I found, I found the acting to be the most exciting acting. During those, that time, I particularly followed Max Stafford Clark's productions. So when I, when I wrote my first full-length play, which was Shopping and Fucking, it was, it was Max that I sent it to, really, remembering the excitement of those evenings in the, in the Royal Court. There have been various moments of coming to the Royal Court when you really feel that a play has both captured its moment and, and, and pushed us forward as a, as a culture and as a, and as a theatre. So I suppose um, something like seeing uh, attempts on her life, suddenly the whole of what theatre can be seems to change in it, and it captures a sense of what it is to be alive in that moment in a way that, that nobody else has. And something, a similar sort of experience with Far Away, where you actually feel your brain rewiring itself and your sense of how language works and who we are in that moment sort of neurologically shifting. And those have been some of my most revelatory moments at the Royal Court. But I come as an, as an audience member, I come looking for that, that um, sort of intensity of experience and aliveness of it, and, and, freshness of, and freshness of thought. I think, yeah, within any good play, um, pretty quickly your sense of being a, seeing it as a writer drops away. And then, yeah, you come out of a very good play like that, very elated that a writer has achieved that and very jealous that that writer isn't you. It's been very interesting that actually, in, in many ways, the Royal Court's uh, mission to, to, to produce brand new plays has spread so, so far and wide that, uh, particularly, I think, in the last 20 years, that, that there's, there's lots of theatres, many, many, many more theatres um, who are producing new plays, and yet... I do still feel a particular excitement coming to the new court, uh, coming to the Royal Court. I feel a particular thrill. I think some of it's to do with the architecture. I think the size of that main house is 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 just right. It's big enough that it can uh, allow for big thoughts and it can allow for epic events, but it's small enough that it doesn't push you into rhetoric and spectacle. If if the play doesn't doesn't need those things any any bigger and the size of the space starts to be its own beast and deny the writer uh, possibilities and says I need rhetoric I need spectacle just to survive as a space and uh, you know in the studio theatre movement allowed certain things but it also restricts certain things I guess there was some judgment but I guess through a lot of luck as well the Royal Court has got for me, this perfect-sized auditorium. Well, I think what's been very impressive and very exciting is that um, the Royal Court has an awareness of its, of, of its legacy, and, it, and I think successive artistic directors have had a sense of, of living up to a history, but it hasn't um, been overwhelmed by its history, and that's um, an incredibly hard thing for an institution to do, and there's very few institutions maybe none that, that actually achieve that. So I think that constant balancing act of, of, of honouring the past and being challenged by the past and the legacy, but never being overwhelmed by it, is something that I hope the, the, the Royal Court can achieve, that almost impossible thing for the next 60 years. I just um, remember uh, rehearsing in the, in the main house and um, just feeling a very strong, almost ghost-like presence of, of um, Samuel Beckett and of Billy Whitelaw and just that intensity of their, of their relationship and that, that relationship between the writer and the actor. It, it was almost like a visitation. I'm not claiming that my work in any way was like that or as good as that, but actually uh, I could all sort of hear these voices echoing, echoing the around the room and this dialogue between the, the writer in the stalls and the, and the actor on the stage. Um, so I would say that that was a very intense experience because it was almost like uh, ghosts in the theatre. But, 
but, but inspiring you and pushing you on to be more focused and more dedicated and challenge yourself and challenge the actor. Um, so so <laughs> I, think, I think quite frightening, but quite beneficial beneficent, or quite strict ghosts actually, probably not beneficent, quite sort of strict ghosts saying, try harder, try harder. Well, certainly if the Royal Court didn't exist, I wouldn't have all sorts of uh, phenomenal uh, memories of, of very revelatory, intense uh, experiences that would uh, challenge me and spur me on in my work, if, if only I could achieve I could achieve that. So I think certainly the past of the, of the Royal Court, if that didn't exist, um, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have a particular sort of gold standard to aspire to.